These books make me feel like what my man's genuine said. Greetings, good day, and welcome. My name is Dion Monroe, project manager, grants consultant, and reader. Get in loser, we're going book shopping. You may or may not have heard me say it before, but I'm gonna say it again. I love to read. I have been a bookie forever. And I started really getting back into like buying books, going to libraries and wanting to visit different bookstores. I would say over the last two years, give or take, yeah, last two years. And books have not only been very entertaining and a great way to, you know, pass time and enjoy creating movies in your head, but many books have also been responsible for literally changing the trajectory of my life. With all that being said, today I want to talk about a few books that have changed my life and why. There's no particular order to these books, it's just I saw them on my shelf. I'm like, ooh, those are the ones that have really changed me professionally, internally, spiritually, emotionally. As I say, all the lees. These books have impacted my work life, they've changed my career, they've changed how I approach working with people. They've changed my relationship with God and just my relationship with myself my emotions and just having better control of myself from the inside to the out and or these books have opened up my eyes to just seeing the world differently and being able to take in information and resources and tools and everything in a much different manner and had I not read these I think my life would be real different yeah real different <laughs> This first book I've had on my shelf for a few years and has definitely changed me spiritually and just how I look at God in the world in just everyday regular instances. And it's called When God Winks at You. How God speaks directly to you through the power of coincidence. The author, how do you say? Squire Rushnell, Mr. Miss, Mr. or Mrs. Mr. Squire Rushnell. This was such a beautiful book. Like, as you guys can see, it's very little, it's very short. It was literally like just reading different people's stories, just right, oh, just regular stories. It wasn't like super monumental things. I think sometimes, or at least I know for myself, I only think God could do really big things. I forget that he's also in the small things as well. So this book reminds me that he's everywhere. He's in every instance. His presence is much more, I guess, regular than what I was assuming it to be where I thought I could only do things like you know my career or like thinking about marriage or like family and such but it could be something as simple as <laughs> bringing God to my meal bringing God to breakfast even if breakfast is just a cup of coffee and an English muffin which is what I have for breakfast today you didn't have to bring any coffee did you Michael the blurb reads when God winks at you is an amazing array of real life stories that will help you begin to recognize the God winks in your own life and attain an unshakable confidence that you are never alone and never have been and when I saw that just picking it up off the shelf it was like one the title God winking at me that's like so I don't know that's so personal like if you ever look somebody in the eye and they winked at you that's such like a like a personal thing I don't know I can't find the word for it but I hope y'all know what I mean I can see you smiling I'm not smiling you're smiling with your eyes and like I said that God is just in everything that he's there for the very little thing to minor things things that you think he may not want to hear and he's there for the big like celebrations and those big like moments of pain and <sighs> this was just my reminder I probably will read this book again some of the things that's covered in this book is God winks are personal winks of hope and reassurance God winks on transitions on comfort on prayer winks on unanswered prayers winks just in time on family and on quests and I don't know about you y'all but all of that all of that is me right now all of that is me right now come on faster 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 why are you always trying to motivate me with cruelty next and it's actually one that i'm reading again maybe for like the third time but it is the purpose driven life by rick warren what on earth am i here for because facts right this book is a 40 day devotional that literally just takes you through how to how can i explain how to just get closer to really having a purpose driven life because sometimes or again speaking personally sometimes i feel like i don't know what the fuck i'm here for or what i'm supposed to be doing or if i'm doing is enough or if i'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing. I knew exactly what to do, but in a 
much more real sense I had no idea what to do. And then I remember that I have books like this that lead me back into the direction that either A, I'm supposed to be going or confirming that I am going in the right direction right now. Each section of the book is designed with purpose, of course. So you have what on earth am I here for? Purpose number one, you were planned for God's pleasure. Purpose two, you were formed for God's family. Three, you were created to become like Christ. Four, you were shaped for serving God. And five, you were made for a mission. Obviously, each day is going to give a much better breakdown of what will go into each of those purposes. And I know initially reading them, I was like, <laughs> a cake hesitant it's scary to give up control especially to something that like you can't visibly like see it's not like it's your mother your father grandma grandpa aunt, uncle cousin or whatever it's something that you just have to trust but after reading this i would say i first found this book maybe four or five years ago i would say i've really been walking with god since 2017 initially going into it i was scared and i was very untrustworthy and i did not think that god wanted to hear about like me not liking him or me not understanding or wanting a relationship or not knowing even how to go about a relationship and I felt guilty and I didn't know how to move forward outside of that guilt but the purpose driven life was one of the books that gave me better direction and just showed me that it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I have done. If I really come back to God and really take the time to connect with him, then that's all he wants. I just have to be intentional about our relationship and the purpose driven life reminds me to do so, which is why I'm reading it again. It's like I've never read the book before. And mind you, as I said, I think this is my third time reading it. I've never even met you. <laughs> Now, shifting gears to more of my professional life and career, this first one, me and my homegirl read this together, and this was at a point in my life where I was transitioning from trying to be a full-time girly to a uh, full-time consultant or just working for myself. And the book that gave me a lot of guidance to do that is called The 4-Hour Work Week by Timothy Ferris. <laughs> escape nine to five live anywhere and join the new rich off rip the title i'm like four hour work week who the f don't want a four hour work week and then to reel me in even further the blurb says how tim the author went from forty thousand dollars per year and eighty dollars eighty hours per week to forty thousand per month and four hours per week who don't want to try to make 40k a month and only work in four hours a week like four hours that's a day you could get that done in a day and now i got the whole i got six days to just breathe now don't get me wrong at first i definitely thought this was like i don't know one of those quick like yeah you'll be rich fast and then you know change your time and blah 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 type of book you know the ones that's just it's no substance there's a lot of content and a lot of words but there's no substance to it there's no like real actionable steps and tactics that i can utilize to really accomplish the life that the author has had this 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 proved me wrong definitely proved me wrong the author not only like gives you instructions of how you can obtain a life that is similar to his but the author not only gives you step-by-step -step instructions guidance templates resources and other tools and such so that you can accomplish what he has accomplished but tailor it to your life and your work style and what it is that you want to do within your career but he is also honest and he also shares his journey he shares what he struggled with and he is just open and honest about it like look everybody's journey is different everybody's like platform and the direction and such that they're going in looks different so these are things that you have to follow you have to stay the course and it's proven that you can develop a four hour work week or at least i just say a shorter work week i can't say at all that my work weeks are four hours like that is a bold-faced lie that's right you're a big fat phony!
though my work week might not be four hours just yet this book has put me in a much better direction so I was able to take a lot of the time back that I was giving to my job and able to utilize it in everything else and in addition to taking my time back from my job there was just other like just little things in everyday life that is also covered in the book as well that I could take my time back from like something as minimal um what was the thing the author said one of his examples was something as minimal as just going to your mailbox once a week and I know that was something I'm like what going at like checking my mail is it really that much time and like low-key I mean it adds up but something as minimal as that where I just gave myself a set day and time I walk my dog three times a day I know when the mail person comes here so I just plan the walk in accordance with the mail person's arrival on a single day each week and on that day it wasn't just me like checking my mail that also meant if it's, I had any returns that I would make sure to leave them by the mailbox you know label them package them and everything so I had to set time aside to do that as well and because of that one little step of just checking my mailbox one day a week it forced me to organize other aspects that went around that one mailbox check time see something as simple as that but it made a difference and I got some time back this next one and I think this is something we all need help with but it's called the middle finger project by Ash Ambrick Ambrick Amberg trash your imposter syndrome and live the un life you deserve because we all deserve a life that is with a middle okay i mean you you deserve nice stuff this book like is more so not just i would say guidance into like your career more so creative more so this is for my writers like as i said i've always been a writer i had a blog i've written for newspapers like online blogs and things like that i've won awards from scholastics for my writing and poetry always been a writer and one of my best friends she picked up this book for me i want to say for christmas and she knew that i really wanted to grow my writing at the time that's what i wanted to do and I would say I mean I'm a grant writer now and a lot of my work and project management involves me writing so still doing it but she knew that my writing was my heart and what I wanted my career to be focused in and at the time I really wanted to get into journalism and I really wanted to just focus on the words that I was crafting and building my website my blog and all that stuff but I was scared to do so <laughs> I didn't know if I was really ready to jump into it and just like I don't know just just f go for it as a response she brought me this book and the author actually has the middle finger project if i'm not mistaken is an actual organization of writers and that's like dedicated to doing what you want to do and not giving a f what anybody says and being your greatest self like it said trash your imposter syndrome and before you even get to the rest of the book which like my friend she knows me so well it was perfect so it opens with the guest list or people who are personally invited to read this book anyone actively plotting their boss's demise the woman buying the extra large bottle of yellowtail after work not that i object and i don't object either because i got some wine in my fridge too look at the size of this glass of wine it's like a fishbowl i love it here that adorable british girl i met in quito who was so creative it hurt but spent the rest of her 20s selling insurance the woman on the internet who wrote each data entry keystroke was a nail in my self-esteem coffin the people in the middle of the mall selling hand cream from the dead sea who are clearly of olympic determination britney spears i got you boo and oh my god britney that's a story for another day but we got you britney it's britney bitch the entire customer service department of any company ever <laughs> she says except mine don't you dare leave me and yes yo customer service teams shout out to y'all i couldn't do it <laughs> couldn't do it The 22 year old hopeful who went to that exciting entry level marketing assistant interview only to come to discover it was a freaking telemarketing. <laughs> the 42 year old who stared at LinkedIn for three hours this morning trying to figure out how to reinvent herself after the divorce slash career change slash the terrifying realization that time is slippery. And why are my boobs doing this? The guy at Applebee's who overheard the grandmother telling her grandkids to stay in school otherwise you'll end up like that. And to my servers, if there's any servers, waitresses, 
hostess hostesses watching this like y'all are doing great job don't let anybody tell you otherwise like you are needed in this economy okay that's so rude that grandma got me tight anyone who's seriously doubting themselves who feels stuck who lacks a sense of accomplishment with their work who's jaded and uninspired who knows they aren't contributing to something more meaningful who has little opportunity to distinguish themselves who worries they don't have a real purpose and who can't help but feel like their iq is dropping by the minute while their brain cells shrivel in a mound of powdered feces Whew. anyone who has been through the hard and needs to believe in themselves again and lastly oh and trailer park girls worldwide because i am you and you are me and together we're gonna prove the world wrong for me personally this is for my project chicks all the people that told us we would never make it out that we went out to nothing because of where we grew up shout outs to you so if you are creative if you feel stuck if you feel like you know you would do i don't know you would do the world a disservice if you did not let your creativity shine read this book because it's a lie stop lying to yourself we need your creativity this one might have been like the single-handed book that determined my career path and it's the reason why i am where i'm at today but this is called the only grant writing book you'll ever need and i'm not gonna lie they wasn't lying i may or may not have talked about my lady can you my dog is here pressing me mad heart hi baby okay I know you're okay I don't know if I've ever really talked about my journey with grant writing but I came across grant writing by accident I was suggested to it by a friend because he knew that I was a very active writer and I loved writing so he just came to me one day like hey Deanna you ever thought about pursuing grant writing and here I am six years later I am still a grant writer as a response I took a lot of courses in grant writing I really took the time to understand what it was I worked with a few people here and there but the first organization I ever worked at is called butterfly dreams i'm no longer working with them i stopped working with them last summer but joy the ceo i owe so much to her she was monumental is not even enough of a word to describe how important she was in my journey and i went to her initially just saying like you know i would volunteer as a grant writer but she was like no absolutely not i am making sure that you get paid and i literally owe her i owe her my career like <laughs> no exaggeration but in my early stages of grant writing and working with her she actually brought me this book she's like hey Deanna I know you're still like early in the grant writing and like understanding all of what it is and I think this would be a really good book for you to have and she was not lying this book is like a little over 300 pages but it has so much information it is so jam-packed with everything that a beginner would really need to know when writing proposals and then then the next step of actually going after grants it has plenty of resources they have like a definition key in the back in the appendix so you know exactly what certain words are oh so as you guys can see i still have like my post-it notes in there i have written notes in here i've gone th through this book time and time again and it was very beneficial as a beginner and even me now as a seasoned grant writer there are certain things that i do still go back to this book about and revisit and my favorite thing about the book is probably the real life examples that they use like they actually give you grant sites to look or correction they give you funder websites to look at they give you other resources that you can click to and visit they have specifically vital information about how to seek grants in today's economy they added a new chapter which is intangibles things they never tell you about proposal writing in-depth interviews with funders nonprofit leaders and policy makers about the grants process and if it's anybody that you want to learn Learn about a grant process with and proposal writing from it's the people that's giving you the money aka funders and nonprofit leaders who are getting the money and policy makers who are further making like funds and resources accessible and lastly strategies for developing and presenting programs that are likely to receive grants if there's one thing i always tell my clientele is that you can put together a well-worded proposal but if your structure of the organization or the structure of 
any programming or initiatives that you have is not concrete and you don't really have a strategy of how you're going to go about executing them, you're not getting a grant. And this book really goes into detail about all of that. Though before getting this book, like I said, I took a few courses and learned a lot. It still taught me so much and it just gave me a greater perspective of how to go about the grant process. And I was learning from experts, multiple experts at that. For finances, and this was a book that helped me when I literally didn't know nothing about nothing. When it came to finances, credit, getting like a car, a house, paying off debt, nothing. Blank. Blank slate when it came to those topics. Come on. What's the best thing to do when you know your childhood days are numbered? Lie down on the ground and go like this? But a book that gave me some direction is called The Money Book for the Young, Fabulous, and Broke. Suze or Susie Orman, like, she wrote this so well so well i want to say i got this book like i think i was still in college this maybe 2015 maybe 2016 but i know i've had it for a while so we're gonna say 2015. during that time i just graduated college i knew the debt that i had i had a job but it wasn't in the career that i wanted and i just wanted to learn more about finances and money and credit and just building up and thinking more about my future but i didn't know where to start i feel like certain things that i looked that was speaking in terms and lingo that I didn't understand and I just wanted a resource that would just talk to me like a regular person and she does that in this book. It is such a good breakdown of so many topics that I need to know as an adult and that I wanted to start learning at a younger age so that I can utilize that information now. So I'm very grateful that I learned this younger, you know, when I was like 23, 24, and now 30 year old me knows what I'm doing. The topics covered in this book are, you know, knowing your score, credit score, career moves, give yourself credit, making the great on student debt, save up, retirement rules, investing made easy, big ticket purchase, car, big ticket purchase, home, and love and money. In these sections, they're not just talking about credit and buying a car, a home, but they're also talking on things that I never thought that far into the future of, which was retirement, love and money, which means how you deal with money with like your friends, your family, and your spouse. Ways to better invest, understanding what a 401k is, because I mean, for me i heard about it but i didn't know what it was i just know like oh you should have a 401 okay but like then what this is another book that i've read through several times if you were ever to borrow this copy from me i got stuff underlined highlighted noted but it was such a it was just such an informative book and like i said it's structured in a way that's just talking to me like a regular person and the author also puts up scenarios and questions that i would say the average person would ask and she gives a response to it like for example she has it oops, she has it here where she says the problem and then solution so problem i have no clue where to save i don't know if i should invest in stocks or just keep my money safe and sound in a boring savings account solution keep it simple and safe a bank credit union or discount brokerage can set you up with a money market account or money market fund so then she spends the remaining uh paragraphs explaining what she means by that solution but you hear like it was a question asked in a very like regular way like i feel like a question that i would ask and and she answered it in a regular way and then just broke it down further where it's like obviously you're getting the definitions and lingo and like the key words that are used for a lot of the things in investing finances credit etc but it's the breakdown that's key and she taught me a lot when as i said i ain't no sh this next book i almost forgot about because i don't have a physical copy at the time i took a copy out from the library so obviously i had to give it back but it's a time Atomic Habits by James Clear. If the title is not already obvious, the book is about having small changes, but getting big results out of those small changes. Very easy to follow, easy to adapt to changes, habits, and tactics that were mentioned in the book that I could easily apply to my everyday life. The author didn't say anything that I was like, what? That's unreal.
unrealistic. It was just literally atomic, like a minuscule thing that I would adjust and I would see a drastic shift in my life. Drastic. I do want to get a copy of this book to have on my shelf and I do want to read it again because I read it four, five years ago and who I was then is not who I am now. So I always like to revisit certain things and that's definitely one of those books that I want to. If I'm not mistaken, Atomic Habits is also available on Kindle Unlimited. So I might add that to the library today. The library is open. Here are your reading glasses. So of course, I'm not just gonna give you guys books that I've read, but I'm gonna give you a few that I'm looking forward to. First and foremost, this one was on my TBR list, but I already read it and it's called The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. This book followed the life of a man who, as the title says, he literally just surrendered and he did not fight against life. He did not give resistance. And if something was presented to him, if something came with ease and clarity, he just allowed it to happen. But, but, but dude, how do you know when they're ready? Well, you never really know, but when they know, you'll know, you know? And you just watch how impactful and successful his life was because he surrendered. He talks about his walk with God. He talks about how he really got into the practice of yoga and meditation. And like y'all heard me say before, I'm all about God, I'm all about yoga, and I'm all about meditation. And him utilizing all three in his life and really just stepping back and giving back control and not needing to be in charge of everything gave him the best life he could have possibly asked for. Just hearing some of the places that he not just worked, but places that he's grown, <laughs> places that he was running. And even when he was faced with turmoil and knowing in a lot of instances, instances that he was completely innocent and remained a good person he just allowed life to keep going and he did not succumb to what was trying to be thrown at him he just listened to what he was supposed to listen to and moved forward and I think that's the best lesson that we can really get from this book it was really good it was really good one thing that I'm trying to make sure that I maintain is my time management but I also just want to use my time wisely and look at I guess time differently in a book that's supposed to help me do that is 4,000 weeks time management for mortals. It says that Oliver Berkman's New York Times bestseller 4,000 weeks has struck a deep chord with many readers. Nobody needs to be told there isn't enough time. Facts. Whether we're starting our own business, trying to write a novel during our lunch break, or staring down at a pot of deadlines as we're planning a vacation, we're obsessed with our lengthening to-do lists, overfilled inboxes, work-life balance, and ceaseless struggle against distraction. We're deluded with advice on becoming more productive and efficient and life hacks to optimize our days but such techniques often end up making things worse the sense of anxious hurry grows more intense and yet the most meaningful parts of life seem to lie just beyond the horizon still we rarely make the connection between our daily struggles with time and the ultimate time management problem the challenge of how best to use our 4,000 weeks the average length of a human life first and foremost I love that it's covering our whole life like 4,000 weeks so at first I was like wait what but then I read the blurb like oh but I do love that again it's not one of those like time hacks and how to use your time best I want to like I said look at time differently and look at it through a larger lens not just every day not just to do list I want to look at it in my whole life because like in my last video where I talked about how I feel about being a fully remote project manager I am looking to have life work balance not work life balance my life comes first then my work my work is a big part of my life but it's not the only part of my life i want to have time management that is for life and this sounds like this going slap and my girl says she liked this book too i need to add this to my list i need well I need, it's on my list i need to read it i'm gonna start it asap Last but certainly not least, my coworker actually just bought me this book this past Christmas for our Secret Santa. It's called Someday Is Today by Matthew Dix. The subtitle says 22 actionable ways to propel your creative life. One thing that I have been slacking in, I haven't been writing. I have let my creativity go. I have been, I would say my writing has been in, in a creative slump. I have not been writing for me. I've only been really writing for my job. I've not taken the time to just open a notebook and jot down thoughts yeah 
I haven't just been writing and I miss it a lot and I know my my heart and my mind miss it a lot so I am picking up this book in anticipation that it will spark and get me back to my creativity and I know my big problem is like I want to be inspired to write but sometimes you're not always going to be inspired like motivation cannot only be correction motivation can't be the only tactic to use to create and to grow and to build like we're not always going to be motivated all the time and I want to be much more disciplined and diligent when it comes to my creative writing I'm like just like I do with my grant writing and my project management work and such I want to do the same thing with my creative aspects because they're just that important they're just as important and also the title like someday is today because I love saying like oh I'll do it tomorrow I can do it tomorrow I can do it tomorrow And then tomorrow never comes. So of course, reading this blurb got me when it said, are you good at dreaming about what you're going to accomplish someday, but not good at finding the time and getting started? How will you actually make that decision and do it? The answer is this book, which offers proven, practical, and simple ways to turn random minutes throughout your days into pockets of productivity and dreams into accomplishments. And I'm also excited that it says that, that this book has amusing and inspiring personal and professional anecdotes and a clear place plan of action one love having some clear direction like tell me where to go okay and two I love being able to like just see people in the work it's like you know you're not the only one but it's nice to be reminded that you're not the only one and having like anecdotes and quotes and stuff from you know everyday people just makes me feel a little better it makes me feel a little less lonely in my struggle to get back to it well you made it to the end of this video good job thank you for watching goodbyes are a bitch <laughs> t-shirt idea goodbye stink i hope that one or some of these books resonated with you and that you add them to your tbr list and that they impact and build your life as much as they have done with mine as i always say i love hearing from you guys always love getting new book suggestions so if you too have any books that have changed or impacted your life please make sure to drop those titles in the comments below if you haven't done so already please make sure to like share and subscribe and until next time Bye, y'all.